Hey y'all, my name is Frank Morelli. I am a young adult author and middle grade author, and I'm also a teacher. You can see right behind me, I'm here in my classroom. And I'm really happy today because it's almost November, and that's one of my favorite months of the year because November happens to be National Novel Writing Month. And if you don't know what National Novel Writing Month is, well, you're in for a real surprise. National Novel Writing Month is a month dedicated to literally writing an entire novel in one month. That is upwards of you know, somewhere between 50,000 and 100,000 words in only 30 days. It sounds almost impossible, but if you use a process and you go through the, the steps that I'm about to talk about today and in the subsequent videos that I make here, you will definitely be successful, especially if you start at the ground level and start learning how to write a short story first. Um, just so you know, I've done this many times, and one, one of the... Uh, one of the main things that I did during the National Novel Writing Month one year was write my first novel, which is No Sad Songs, which actually came out a few years ago. And I used some other National Novel Writing Months in the past few years to write other novels, such as uh, Please Return to Toby Solano. And the first book in that series, which is called Please Return to Norbert Finkelstein. Hope you have a chance to read those so you can see how I was able to put together an entire story, one of which turned into a series in just 30 days. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the most important steps in the process of trying to put together either a novel or even something as short as a short story. And that what I'm talking about is generating ideas. So the first question that you have to have in your mind as, as a creative person of any type is, where do I get inspiration from? Where can I go to find things that will give me ideas to help me understand what my story is going to be about, or what my sculpture is going to look like, or what my painting might appear to be? Well, I'm here to tell you that those things are happening all around you, all the time. You get inspiration from anything. Um, if you're an artist of any kind, you should really get in the habit of trying to observe things. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to go to a public place, especially now that many of us have been in quarantine and are looking for some outside air. Go to a park. Sit away from each other. Social di socially distance. But watch things. Watch life unfold before you. You'll notice patterns. You'll notice how people interact with each other. You'll notice animals. You'll notice the sky. You'll notice beautiful things that suddenly make you want to write about them and share them with other people. Essentially, when you write a story or you make any kind of artwork, all you're doing is trying to share your internal emotions and thoughts with other people through a storyline or through a picture or through something that you put together. Um, one of, there's, there definitely are some, some really good techniques that you can use to take this inspiration and somehow be able to log it down. In other words, you can't just rely on your brain to remember every piece of inspiration that you see in a day. Because if you're like me, you get inspired by lots of things. You can hear a song. You can read a book. You can, you can teach a class, like I do all the time, and see people in your class remind you of when you were younger. You could be, like I said, in a park and just watch two people playing on a swing set. And it might remind you of things in your life that are important to share with other people. But again, it's really hard to keep those memories in your head. So what I like to do is I, I, I've gotten the habit of trying to carry around a notebook with me all the time. Notice how small mine is. Um, it's not big enough to really fill up a pocket. I like to keep it sometimes in my front pocket and carry a pen with me all the time. And I know that sounds old fashioned. I know that we carry these great contraptions around with us all the time that are phones and we can log information into there. But the act of being able to just quickly pull out a piece of paper and write down your idea, close it up, and put it away for later, it's golden. Always do it. Once you start getting some ideas written down, even if it's just a bullet pointed list, it's time to take those ideas and start to, um, start to develop them. And some ways that you can develop them are ways that your teachers may have showed you in, in the past by using graphic organizers. Things like bubble charts or outlines or even drawings. Um, some of my students like to create notes that are just you know, their own thoughts and then draw. It depends on what kind of person you are, but it's really important that you develop your own way of trying to take information that you receive into your mind as inspiration, log down the information, maybe in a bullet pointed list, and then figure out how you're going to develop it by going a little further by possibly using a graphic organizer. So I hope this, at this point of the year, if you're interested in, in participating in National Novel Writing Month, you're starting to gather inspiration, gather ideas and organize them, and I hope that the next time 
uh, I have a chance to talk to you. We're going to go through the next step and start to actually develop our storylines. Thanks for listening to me today. Happy National Novel Writing Month. I can't wait to hear from you soon.